How can you? Okay, good morning, traders. Welcome to the Bookmap Live Trading Webinar today with Scott Pulsini. Uh, we do this every Thursday. Uh, it will be live trading. Uh, and uh, it is in simulation demo paper trading uh, account. I'll, I'll go over that in just a minute here. It um, is in simulation <laughs> demo. So you understand what you're getting involved in. That's important. Uh, this is for educational purposes only. So you guys know who Scott is or his backstory here. Uh, very interesting story uh, featured in a book by uh, Dr. Brett uh, Steenbarger uh, and uh, been trading for, for quite a long time here. Um, I have Scott's uh, contact information. He does offer mentorship and educational services. So I'll be putting these into the chat for you if you want to reach out to Scott. Uh, all right, let's go through the disclosures and turn it over to Scott. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, so uh, let me uh, turn it over to Scott here. And uh, Scott, if you can share your screen. Back at Jeremy? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Why can't I find my screen? There it is. Got, Got it. it. There it yeah. is. Right. Got it. Yeah. All right, just had some uh, goodbyes fire off here in the S right on cue. Let's start the webinar. <clears throat> As you can see here, this is uh, over a thousand buy ice. This is, uh, well, it was an important zone. We just kind of knifed right through it, but. Um, oh, where's my jar? So this was an important area. This was a gap up directional conviction that led to this whole up move. This is the first test here. This was the zone a little bit below it, but somebody's buying it here. So uh, if this does not hold, it could get ugly. I mean, technically, we already are through <clears throat> this prior balance. This was the high volume. No, that was basically this area here. And then this was yesterday's balance. And we just broke down from there and here. Um, many times when markets break down from balance, they'll come back, they'll retest either the bottom or the high volume node and then continue down. It doesn't mean they have to, but these markets do it more often than not. So, But you can see here, there's no structure here, right? So meaning there's not prior traders that are, um, you know, committed, that were committed to that area. Many times traders will hold until the area comes back. Obviously, this would have been a long time to hold, but... Uh, Anyway, there's nothing here, so this thing could just scream straight down here. So, you know, if you're if you're just playing the bar charts, you're just guessing here. You're like, oh, is this going to hold? Is this going to break? I, I don't know what to do. I'm going to buy it. And so the thing is, that's what the real-time buying is. That's why it's the king, right? This is the, the best edge you can possibly have. You know your important areas, which this is, and now we have a real-time buying event, and we trade off that event. Um, you know, I'll go long, I'll go shorter. I have no bias. I mean, obviously, this is a this is back turned back into a bearish market, <clears throat> intermediate term, longer term. But I'm a day trader, right? And I trade the volume setups as they come in. So, I, and I know this is an important zone. So this could bounce here as easy as it, as it can knife right through. Again, if you're trading the the bar charts, you have no clue what to do here as far I mean you just put on a trade and hope this is telling you what however this reacts to this large bias is probably going to be um, an extended move so the way we trade this is <clears throat> look at our current ATR average true range that gives you the current uh, judge of volatility why this is almost up here 
So you can see 6.95, so seven points is your uh, ATR. Then we take a look at our Ludwig levels. These help me, these are incredible for day trading support and resistance and also coming up with a, a story on what's going on. Oh, and then we also have the blue lug, which is very, very powerful as support. So this is, there's a lot of confluence here, right? You're in that important zone, you got blue lug, and then you get your volume event. So at, at the lugs, I take the trades aggressively out of here. So aggressively means I'm getting in just outside an ATR out of here. So we know ATR is seven, right? So the top of this zone was 22 and a half. So it means 29 and a half would be an ATR. I go a little outside the ATR because you have these algos that get to an ATR and then they whip it back into the zone. So I'm going to get in 10% um, more of that. So seven, so, so it's seven points, 10% of seven points is 0.75. So basically three ticks. So I should be at 29 and a half for a full ATR. I'm gonna go three ticks higher than that. So that's 30 quarter. So 30 quarter will be my entry on that. Um, here. The other thing you have to figure out, you know, is your risk because you don't want to be over trading your account. So for my current P&L, um, so first of all, if the ATR is seven, so I'm basically risking seven, seven and a half above, seven and a half below if I were to put my stop at foot. So if I get filled here, I'm risking then an AT, outside an ATR below here. So that's 15 points alone. And then this zone is another, looks like seven points, right? So that's 22 points I'm risking on there. So I go to my risk spreadsheet with my P&L in here. It's actually probably a little higher than this. I just haven't updated it. Um, so with that so with that P&L, that means if I'm risking 22 points, I can put on a three lot, right? And this is risking 2% of your account size on any given trade. You should never be risking more than that. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you are, you're playing with fire, you will be burned eventually and blow out your account by trading too big. So um, you limit your risk to about 2% of your trading account on each trade and, you know, 5 to 6% in a day. If you hit that 6% mark, you should be done for the day. Tomorrow is a new day. You'll be clear, much more clear-headed and not emotional because you're getting your face kicked in um so you know you we talk about this all the time you can you need a broker that you can set up a, a just a mandatory stop because like i'd say all the time people always have a plan like mike tyson saying everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth right like you, you think you'll be able to control yourself but trust me there's going to be times where you get so emotional and then you just you basically just say screw it and you keep throwing in orders and all of a sudden at the end of the day you, you blow 80 percent of your account and you wake up the next morning and you say what was i thinking right don't get to that point have your broker stop you out at a predetermined level and then they turn you off basically to the start of globex and then you, you restart and then tomorrow's another day right? i'm not going to get down go down that rabbit hole of a rant but probably the most important thing you can do in your trading first and foremost before any of this other stuff you need to learn to control your risk all right so that <clears throat> order is resting i'm getting in once again aggressively i know this pretty much through that zone but i mean you can see all this confluence right so we're close to this prior market profile composite we'll get into that blue lug extreme standard deviation of vwap um some other important things that we look at in my trade room is uh, this is called the edge this is showing you um, all 500 stocks in the E-mini S&P 500, whether they're above or below their five-minute TAS boxes. Uh, it's, it's a TAS product. Um, so they're just like mini market profiles. You don't need to know the intricacies of that. All you need to know is if this if this is the 67% line, if the if the if you see the color, so red means it's oversold above the 67. It could get all the way up to you know 90, technically 100%, right? We, we saw 90 the other day. But the point is, when you are above this level, you don't want to be initiating shorts if the red's above there. You don't want to be initiating um, longs if the green's above there because you get the pullbacks, right? So the point is, this long is even looking even better because we're close to oversold as it is based on this um, you know, short time frame reading. So we've just got a lot going for this trade on the long side if this can get back above this zone. If this doesn't, if this gets below here, well... I want to I want to see because I don't sell into lugs. That's how powerful they are, right? Unless I see some extreme relative volume. Uh, so we'll check the relative volume here, but I don't think it's that extreme. Yeah. So um, 
know, we got close to 200 percent, which just just means two times normal volume for this time period at this bar here. But it's nothing crazy, right? So I'm not gonna unless I start seeing yellow bars like you know what, what happened here overnight. That just means it was over 200 percent. I'm not. I would not sell into a blue log because I, it's more likely if there's not the big money's not coming in, it's more likely to bounce than push through. It could push through, but then I then I just trade my setup in a conservative manner. So my this is the aggressive entry where I hop in just outside an ATR. My conservative entry is when I wait for an ATR, I wait for a retest of the area, and then it fails. I get in. I get in that trade just outside an ATR. So we're just waiting to see what happens out of this zone, and that's how I trade those. Um, let's see. So there was some pretty massive ice here in Russell earlier as well by ice. Um, let's see here, he had, he had 74, 108. None of these are threshold, threshold for Russell. So when I say threshold, there are different markets have different amounts that I pay attention to that are wor worthy of trading. And that is just from trading thousands of these setups. I know each market's thresholds that it's worth trading. A lot of guys that don't really know what they're doing and they get the SI indicator and that they're trading every spike in the SI indicator. That's, you know, you don't want to be participating if it doesn't get above a certain level. So like I say, every webinar, that's what my trading course, the SI indicator course, you can get on the book marketplace in my, in my website as well. That goes over all the setups and the thresholds for these markets. So you know exactly what is worthy of your trading, right? And actually this is coming in again, so we can draw this on right now. <clears throat> I don't know why I keep getting the sounds for the, I just disabled it when I was on with Sam. I, every time someone enters the room, I get the sounds. I don't know why that keeps happening, or why it keeps uh, resetting. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think you, you probably have to go yeah, through it again. Uh, I can I can I can show it to you, um, uh, Scott. I might as well do it real quick. Okay. So what do I do here? So go to settings, uh, bo bottom. Um, uh, no, not 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 there. Uh, yeah, down this there. One here. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. go to uh, it's alerts or uh, what is it? Um, scroll down. Um, hold on. No it's notifications. Top, notifications. You're right by it. One hundred. Down. A little bit above. There you go. Yeah, okay. And then uh, yeah. scroll down now. Oh yeah. Oh geez. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll come back to this. There's, there's some just. Yeah, fine. you got to deselect basically it. all of them. Um, but uh, I don't know why that happened because I did it. I did it last week. I don't know. It just like resets. I don't know. All right, so you heard that stop run here in Nasdaq. Um, that was 190 stops. That's above threshold. Threshold for Nasdaq's 150. Draw that zone. And we may have multiple market longs here. And then if that happens, then I can play um, the Jefferson song, moving on up. If I'm long multiple markets, that's the rule of my room. So we'll, that's the first time that'll ever happen on this uh, webinar, but we may we may have to do that. It's, it's pretty funny. My Actually, one of my very good friends um, that I used to trade with at the trading firm, every time he would get long the E-mini S&P, he would play the Jefferson's moving on up song. And so I've uh, adapted that for my room to get some... Get some comedy in there. You got you got to have a little comedy when you're trading. But um, I'm getting ahead of myself. But just you have that to look forward to if I have multiple positions on in different markets. All right, let's mark up. I just like to use different colors here for so I don't get confused in the zone. So this is the most recent uh, ice zone here for Russell. Uh, ATR is 36.9, so 37 ticks for this. So we can judge what we want to do here. I just want to see something first with NASDAQ. I want to check our ATR and how I'm going to trade this. Uh, ATR is 29.53, so that means 29 and a half points. It's just above, so I round up, so 29 and three quarter points. This is a very important zone for NASDAQ as well. So you can see this here. This is a pretty big balance area this is the top directional conviction gap directional conviction directional conviction and then we finally got through it came back this is where we gapped up that led to the whole up move this is a very 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 important zone right so these Four are the stop, stop sell gc <clears throat> these are the best places to make trades right prior important areas and then you get your volume set up you have a very high percentage trade 
you notice I said percentage, meaning it is not 100%, nothing's 100%, but an ad trading edge is when you have um, you know, a higher expectation on what you're doing than not. So I know it's a very important zone, That's, but I don't know which way it's gonna trade out of the zone, but I'm, I'm gonna use my, my volume setups to give me my edge, right? That's the whole idea. And by the way, I just got long crude. We'll talk about this here in a second. Uh, so let me quickly put this in. I actually forgot about this trade, which is not good. I've been having a lot of mental errors in August. It's cost me a lot of money. Uh, 38.7, so 39 ticks. I go 10% uh, out of there. So basically 43 is my stop. That's where I entered above this zone, and I will stop out 43 ticks above this zone. I mean below this zone, sorry. So this bottom of the zone is 81. That's 41.38 is where I will stop out of this current long. And we'll go over this here in a second. I just don't want to miss uh, the NQ, possible NQ trade. So long crude. Um, let's check our lugs in NQ. I don't miss a trade here. I forgot my uh, waterboarding. Hold on a second. I gotta have ticks, ticks running. I make fun of it, but it's very crucial to see what these underlying stocks are doing. But trust me, you have a position going against you. You get to watch it and hear it. It literally, I, I, I liken it to waterboarding because I've never been waterboarded, but I would imagine that's what it feels like. So anyway, we're close to this uh, baby lug, we call them, and then the major blue lug down here at uh, 77. Again, these are called Ludwig Levels. Um, go to Ludwig, Ludwig. I think it's LudwigLevels.com. Um, I just blanked there. It's LudwigLevels.com. You can do the uh, th free three-day trial. So you saw it on Bookmap, and you get some special pricing. But uh, that's what I use. So that's what these are here. So I will not take a short into the blue lug, like if we were just talking about ES. I'm not going to take this aggressively out of this zone because we're not actually at the blue lug like we are in the ES. That's why I was going to take that. So for this trade here. If I'm going to go long, I'm, I'm going to enter this conservatively, meaning I'm going to wait for the full ATR, the retest, the failure, and then I'll go long, and then my stop's going to go outside an ATR below, right? As long as this doesn't violate more than an ATR below. If this gets more than an ATR below this volume event, then my long idea is canceled, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so we only got, let's see how far we got. So this was at uh, 11. This got down to 96. Yeah, so that's not, uh, that's what, 20, 25 points. That was pretty close to an ATR though. So 30.44 is your actual ATR right now. So um, we got some strategies that we're working on in my trade room that are um, just for the trade room. I'm not going to go into these in here. We do the position trading counts on uh, the position trading trades in here. In the bookmap webinars, it's more of a fast term. I don't like to say scalp, but it's more of a you know quick type trade. Uh, we've been working on different uh, strategies in there, but we have a couple that are working ridiculous, which I figured. Um, but those are you know for my trade room. So if you want to check those out, head over to my trade room. Um, I kind of mentioned that because there's a lot of people from my trade room here, and one of the setups just basically occurred, so that's why I was pointing that out. If you're in my trade room, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so if this gets seven points below here, which I think it already may have, then my long is disqualified. Then I'll take a six and a half as your ATR. So the bottom of the zone was at 15, 15.75. Yeah. So seven points is 8.75. So nine, nine quarter. So Okay, here we go, same this exact ATR, right? So this actually is disqualified from a long because we did get outside the ATR. That's how I trade these. So if, if this market can push more than an ATR outside a volume event, that disqualifies my long, my long, um, my long trade. So that is canceled. So what I will do here now is I'll go short this, right? I, I, I wanted to go long. I know this could be an important support area. But this should not have been able to get through here, right? As far as an ATR is concerned, 
So if this does a TRB test failure, I will go short now. Long is disqualified for this market. Long is not disqualified for this trade because we did not get a full ATR below here. So if this gets 30 points above here, retest failure, I'll go long. Um, all right, let's quickly go over this crude trade while we're waiting for equities to do anything. So this was a, an important zone here in crude as well. It, it would behoove you to look at this stuff. This is not, you know, rocket science what I look at here, right? We look at balance areas and important areas. There's four important of areas of trading, you know, tops and bottoms of balance areas, right? High volume nodes of balance areas, that's right in the middle. And then directional conviction, gaps are directional conviction, and then buying and selling tails. So you can see here, you had a buying tail and you had directional conviction. That was that zone. And we'll look at that like magic. Bounce right off of there. So again, yeah, you can just buy blindly into these zones, but you know, a lot of times they rip right through. So that's what you use your volume events for. So that's the, the stop run, which we call a dumb and dumber. This is one of my six setups that I use to trade. This was a 350 lot stop run, right? That instantly rejected. So stops are usually, we call them the dumb money, the retail trader. I understand everyone on here is pretty much a retail trader, including me, but we are not as informed as the big money. And when I say informed, we can't trade as big as the, as the big funds, so on and so forth. So we can't push the market around like they do. So that's what I mean by smart. They're not actually smarter. They just can push the market around as far as I'm concerned. Trust me, I've seen some trading firm traders and many of them are not that smart. That was my motivation and when I first joined my trading firm, I saw some of the guys that were making money and I said, well, if these guys can do it, I know I can do it. So I'm not going to go down that storyline right now. But anyway, this was an instant rejection here. That's why I, when I got long here, we were a little bit below the yellow, yellow love, but I got long aggressively, meaning an ATR out of here because of that zone. And I was willing to be aggressive on this trade. Stock by CL, 159 contracts. Hold on one second. I still left an order in. My usual mistake. Uh, let me cancel these. I can't tell you how many errors I've made this month. I mean, I've got a lot going on. We're doing this different strategies in my trade room. I'm doing multiple accounts, so on and so forth. So I've had a lot of errors this month, and it's just not excusable. So anyway, that's why I'm long that zone. Now we look at some targets here. Um, I use my the, the main areas. Actually, this was a setup. So first and foremost, this is a new this is a new volume event. So I can trail my stop based on this new volume event. You see, buy stops, 259. So we mark up that zone. All right. So you come over here. Let's get this out of here for a second. So we want to use your little crosshair tool and come in here, and you want to judge. And not judge. You come where this spike started, and then where those bubbles started, and then you. And then you incorporate all the bubbles that happen in that stop run, right? So you go all the way till it stops, which is right there. And then you go to the top bubble. The top bubble is there. That's my zone, right? So now what I can do is most traders that probably don't make money, they trail their st stop on some arbitrary thing. Like, oh, wow, I love that profit. I, I don't want that to come back on me. I'm going to get out, right? I trail my stops, which is the correct way, because again, the market does not care if you want to lose money or what what you have in the trade and so on and so forth. They don't care. The market doesn't care about that. The market cares about volume events, right? So this is a new volume event. Now I trail my stop based on this new volume event. And how do we do that? I already showed you. We'll go over it again. 41 is your ATR. So I go 10% of there. So 45 ticks. I add four ticks. 10%. So 45 ticks out of here will put me at, at, this was 17, the bottom of the zone. So that's 77, 72. So now I can trail my stop at 87, 72. All right. So you can see the difference here because of the new volume event. My other stop was way down here. So I just saved myself 130 ticks because of the new volume event. All right. So if this comes back, I'll make a little bit on it. And if it keeps going, I can actually trade this new setup as a brand new setup, because it is, and trade off of that and add to this trade. Trade it independently, right? But then I'll have multiple positions on it. And if you catch a runner, which is the whole goal of trading, right? Like 
guys, it's traders. You're not going to make consistent money every day. I, I just laugh every time. I giggle every time I hear um, someone say, oh, I, I just want to average $500 a day or I want to make not even average. They don't even say average. They say, I want to make $500 a day. You're not going to have consistent. That's not how, how trading works, right? You're going to have you make 500, you lose 200, you make 200, you know, you lose 900, you, you make 2000. Like it's not a consistent income, right? But the whole point of trading is you're you're trying to tread water, make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, and then you catch a, a trending day where you're adding, 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 and then you have a day that makes your month or makes your year. I, I you know, any big trader, any successful trader, I will bet most of them have maybe five to six days for the entire 200 trading day year that made their entire P&L, right? Then that's just how trading works. The sooner you can understand that, the better. So we are approaching right here. I may get out of one of these if it's confluent with something, which it is. This is baby lug right here. These are incredible for profit targets. I'm definitely getting out there if we get up to there, but this is baby lug and you can see that's confluent with the prior market profile composite. So I will get out of one. This gets a little higher. The baby lug is right around let's see here, 8660. I'll get out of one of those because it's confluent with something. I don't usually get out just at baby lugs, but if it's confluent with something else, like I just showed you, market profile composite, then I will get out of, out of some. Um, all right, so, but hopefully, I mean, I'll put this in here. I usually am just watching because I don't just get out. Like, I don't put limit orders and get out because if it just goes, we, we get up here and you just see nothing but buying blue bubble, blue bubble, blue bubble through here, I'm not selling, right? I'm not selling. If, if no one else is selling, why do I want to sell, right? That's why I rarely just put in limit orders to get out because if it just blows through there, then I'll hold it and I'll try to get up to the red lug. Again, let's see where that red lug was. That red lug's at 89.18, so that's quite a ways away. <clears throat> um, as far as adding to this trade, I have to decide if that's worth it because we are so close to the red lug. Let's check our relative volume real quick to see if it's worth Again, I rarely buy or sell into the major lugs because they're so powerful, right? And you can see my little tick strike letting me know what's going on in there. Uh, so this is almost two to one, but it's not quite. So I probably won't add to this trade. Um, quickly, let's take a look at NASDAQ. We definitely got an ATR above there. Hold on, I think I forgot to cancel my, no, I didn't. So you can see this is an ATR, definitely an ATR above here, right? So ATR is 31.75. Let's just say 32 to 32 points for right now. So an ATR would have been 52. We definitely hit that, right? So this was an ATR, a little more. Now I'm waiting for a retest failure, and then I will go along this setup as long as nothing new comes in, right? And I was trading this conservatively because we were still below the yellow lug. So the, the way I, I determine how I'm trading these setups is in relation to the yellow lug. She calls it the directional lug, right? So if we are above, let's just look at this. If we're below the yellow lug, I will wait for retest failure of the setup. I won't be aggressive. If we're above the yellow lug, I'll take longs aggressively. I'll take shorts, right? Unless we're right at the lug, because you may be asking, well, you were going to take the even the S&P long, and the reason was at the time because we were right at the lug. Now you see we formed new lugs, and this is actually bullish too, where you can come up with a story just based on how the lugs when they form and how the market reacts to them. If the markets can hold directional yellow prior blue, that is a very strong sign that we can get up to the red, right? If for some reason you not some reason happens all the time. If you form new lugs and it can't hold prior blue or yellow, then you expect. So you're just coming up with a story and then you look for volume events to back up your story, right? That's what trading is. That's that's my edge, right? And I use that and I use important zones like we've talked about. All right, I need to take a break. Any questions on any of that, Bruce? Uh, let's see. Uh, what, put uh, yeah, here, Nick, so uh, lug is he's talking about uh, lug level, uh, lug wig levels. It's a, a, a subscription right. service. So, uh, um, uh, yeah, it's at lug, ludwig levels dot com. <laughs> so it's uh, neat. Do you do you understand why I name them lugs? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, even say I it, can't even right? say. Try it, saying yeah. it three hundred times a day. Yeah, lug, <laughs> so lug, we, lug. we call them lugs in the room, and she actually likes it, and it's a, just a quick way to 
Um, you know, she even has for book map, she's coming up with the, she's t beta testing in my trade room. There's some select guys in there and girls that are using them in there, beta testing for a book map, but she literally names them lugs, right? It's just an easier way than saying Ludwig level 45 times a day. So, <laughs> all right. So we're waiting for a retest failure, but go ahead. What was, what was no, your that, that, question? That was, uh, that was it. Um, that's all there is okay. at this point. All right, so again, my stop here is at 87.72. So you see what is going on here, right? I am forcing this market to get outside of an ATR out of the zone because otherwise you just will be algo to death, right? When, when the big money's not playing in here or you're not, you know, you don't have the, the high volume event stop runs, the rest of the trade, 80 Five percent of all trade are algos, right? And that's this stuff, right? They are forcing traders and whip sign traders all day long. So the way I circumvent that is I put my entries and my exits outside of ATRs because you have these algos inside of the volume events that can't get outside the ATRs, then they start to whip you back and forth, back and forth, right? So I force this market to get the full ATR out of here to stop me out. So this did not actually get, and of course it came real close to that and didn't fill me, um, but this market did not get an ATR above here. So say this comes down and this fills me, and then it comes back to the zone and then fails again. Now I'll flip and go short right? because of the volume of it. So this helps you understand like what's really going on in the market. So this should, if this is gonna continue to be bullish, this should hold. The stop run should fire off, the big money should come in behind it and, and, and keep it up, prop it up, right? If this fails, something's telling something's wrong, right? As far as being bullish, so then I'll look for ATR retest fail, and I'll go short. And the reason I do the conservative entry is because we're above the yellow luck, right? That I showed you, which is right here. We're above the yellow luck, right? So that's why that came so close to that baby lug, and that's very upsetting. But you see, it did. I should have probably just got out. It was close enough. You just look at the, I mean, this is why these, you want to know how to, we'll do the market profile stuff here in a little bit, but you want to know these levels, right? That was the exact tick of the top of that. I should have just said that's close enough to be below and get out of one, right? I'm probably going to cost myself some money here, but <clears throat> you want to pay yourself when you are correct, but not just ran in random areas, right? And I have select areas that I pay myself at. And market profile tops and bottoms are one of them. So I should have not been greedy there for an extra. What did I try to milk out of that? Another eight ticks. That's just, that's, that's not good trading. You can throw that in my bag of errors for, uh, for August. All right. So let's see what happened here. So we did get an ATR below there, if you remember. So I, I canceled my long, which I would have been filled pretty much the exact tick. So are you guys seeing like how these algos like know the ATRs and then they rip them right back? Like that's, it's, it's, it's uncanny, right? So anyway, I didn't take that long because we did get the ATR below the zone, right? So now let's see if we got an ATR above it. Uh, we certainly did. We got about nine points above the zone. So this this volume setup is disqualified for me either way, right? We got an ATR below it. We got an ATR above it. I have no opinion of this area. I wait for a new setup. So I'm done with the yes for now until I see a new setup. What's happening here? Oh, shockingly, we're going to retest the zone. So now we go ATR retest, and my room. Hopefully, my room is listening to this and understanding what I'm talking about. If we get back here fail back up or go back up then I'm going to go on I don't mean to be cryptic guys but like you know I do these webinars for book map we've been doing it for years but my trading room we have some other I, I can't think of the word proprietary stuff that we're working on and that's part of a paid room right like you know they pay for additional stuff is what I'm saying so I'm not trying to be cryptic I'm just trying to because we just adapt adopted another um another strategy so i'm just pointing it out so hopefully some of them took the trade all right uh, so it's 20 so again we want to know the atr which is 30.29 so we're waiting for a retest of this zone so i want to see at least 10 percent of an atr close to that zone for my retest so atr again is 30.4 so 30 and a half so if we can get three and a half points within that within the top of the zone i consider that a retest right so if this gets down to 23 and a half 
that's a retest. It didn't quite get there there, so that's not a retest yet. If a retest fails, then I'll go along. So we're waiting on that. Uh, let's see what happened in here. This was the most recent uh, setup in Russell. I don't think we got any tear below here. Let's see, it was at 45, and it was got down to 09. No, ATR is 43. So this is still hovering around this zone, so we can trade that as well. But I'll come back to that. I see something. I heard a bunch of wheat stuff earlier, and I forgot to look at it. So I can almost guarantee you these were winning trades because every one I miss is absolutely perfect. Is that just the way it works for me? You guys can see I'm just like a normal. I am a normal person, normal, normal, normal trader, but. You know, I've had success, but I complain just like everybody else, right? It's like you feel like many times the market's against you. I mean, I know, I know, um, common sense wise, that's not correct, but it certainly feels that way. Like with my tick outs and every trade that I miss, you can ask my trade room, I'll point it out and I'll miss it. It's perfect winner, perfect winner, perfect winner. And then I get in it and then I get tortured for four hours, right? So it's just that's what it feels like anyway. I know that's not real, but you got to fight that stuff. I mean, that's part of. Part of being a trader, right? You, you go down those rabbit holes where you're like, I can't tell you how many traders I've heard in my career. They, I, they got a, there's a camera behind my back watching what I'm doing, and somebody's screwing with me. It's, that's how it feels. It's, it's, it's pretty funny. Not really. It's not really that funny, actually. All right, let's um, mark this up to see if I missed a trade here. We don't think you're normal, Scott. You don't think what? We don't think you're normal. <laughs> well, you'd be you'd be right on that. <laughs> And I'm not talking in a good way. Um, so ATR is, when I mean, you trade 20 plus years, it, you know, you're, you're borderline away into a rubber room. So thank God for book map, or I probably would be, I, I definitely wouldn't be trading. I can tell you that. I mean, you guys know my story. Most of you, I had to, you know, went from making millions to making nothing to having leaving the, I had to leave the business in 2013. And Dr. Brett, Steenbarger, um, you guys, most of you guys know who he is. He wrote the book Enhancing Trader Performance. He sat behind me for a year. Anyway, he told me and put me in that book. He told me, he literally called me and said, hey, he's like, you want to check out this new software called Bookmap? He's like, it reminds me, because he sat behind me for a year. He said, it reminds me of what you used to do um, as far as reading volume. And the minute I brought it up, and this is before the SI indicators, before most of the stuff, it was just basically, you know, the liquidity. You can see liquidity in the bubbles, and I'm like, I'm back. And then when the SI indicator came out, I told you guys, I was I, when I came back and did my first, my initial book map webinars, I was trading stocks because I was just so, you know, jaded from futures of being a millionaire and then make, couldn't make a dollar over, the, you know, series of years. So I wasn't even going to trade futures. I'm like, I'll just trade, use book map to trade stocks. And then they came out with the SI indicator with the CME MBO data, and Bruce kept telling me how ridiculous, ridiculously powerful it was. And the minute I looked at it, I'm like, okay, I got to go back to futures because this is just silly, powerful. So that's why that's where I'm in today. All right, so that we did get a retest of the zone, but am I just getting long? No, I wait for retest failure. This could just go right through here, and I'm not going long. Right. So let's see if this can hold and move back up, and I'll take the long. If not. Um, by the way, I'm about to get stopped out. My greed here is going to cost me uh, about 100 ticks. So do you see why if this survives, this is because I put this outside of an ATR because these algos get to an ATR and then they whip it back, right? And you see that was real close. It doesn't mean I won't get stopped out, but at least I have life. I'm very mad at myself. I didn't get out of one there. That was really, I, was, I, was, I pointed out the market profile composite high there to you guys and I didn't get out of one. I don't know what I'm doing. I try to, I'm trying to squeeze out eight ticks. All right, so as long as this doesn't get a full ATR below this zone, I can still take the long. So 32.14, so 32 and a quarter at the bottom of the zone was 11. So I need to see like 79-ish, 78, not even close, right? So I could still take this long on a retest failure of this zone. So now my order will go again, 32.14, is your ATR, so 32 and a quarter at the top of the zone's at 120, so 52 quarter, I can go long. And 
or hammering grades right now, so I wanted to mark up that zone because it looked like it was still in there. So I didn't miss the cherry, but I probably missed it now. Let's see. So anyway, that's where I will go long in Q as long as it doesn't get an A tier below here. But on the flip side, you guys can all see, we talk about this every single book in that webinar. Look what's below. Band, a monster band that's been in there forever of liquidity. And what is that? Does that mean you go long because there's a bunch of support down here? No, it means the big money wants to get filled down here. They've been in here forever. The longer it's been in here, the more of a magnet it is because meaning if something comes out, say a, you know, a bomb goes off somewhere, this thing will rip right through here. Well, they wouldn't just let this sit in here forever if they didn't want to get filled, right? So it's not a game. This, see this liquidity? This is a good example, right? This is real. This is not. These are algos messing with you guys. This is real liquidity that these guys want to fill, meaning they will get it down to this area to get their fill. How? Because they have huge size where they will push it into that. How do I know that? Because this is the exact game I used to play when I was a big scalper. We talk about this every webinar too. Again, forgive me if you guys have seen this a thousand times. There's always new traders on here. This would my, be my game. I put, you know, this is E-mini S&P, but I would put like a thousand bid here and then I would start getting short up here and I would test the waters. I'd sell some and it would react lower. I'm like, okay, I'd sell some more. And then the closer it got to my resting bid, I would just step on the gas and then people would see like the flurry of orders coming in. Sellers like, oh, someone big selling. They would jump on my coattails and it would push it right into my bid. I'd be out. I'd make 50 grand, be done. And that was the game. And it's still the game. That's why if, why you can, if you can see this, which you can in Bookmap, why Bookmap is so incredible just for this stuff. You have an edge. You can see what they're trying to do. That is the most, this is the most important aspect of trading, real-time volume. The setups, liquidity. If you can, I say it every day in my trade room, every day in here, if you can't beat them, join them, right? Instead of always bitching, oh, the algos, they run everything, the big money, they run everything. You can see exactly what they're trying to do. So join them, right? Doesn't mean I'm gonna get short this, but I'm just giving you guys an example. Like in the you open up your charts in the morning and you see huge bands of liquidity one way, there is a very, 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 very high percentage you're going to hit that liquidity because they will make it hit the liquidity because they're big and they could push the market in the liquidity, right? Hopefully that makes sense because I know it seems simplistic, guys. That's exactly what's happening. That's what my hope. Hey, what do you know? Look at that. It looks like someone's stepping on the gas to get it down here. Um, that's what all my SI... My course, my setups are all based on my, they're not hypothetical. It's all based on when I was a large trader and how I used to react. And I, you can see how the big traders would react. That was this right here. So this was 170 stops. I can't believe there, someone stepped on the gas there and caused these stops and it's going to go right into the liquidity. I guess it's the first time for everything. I'm being sarcastic. I, I just, I do that every day just because... It used to bother me, and like I said, <clears throat> then when I can actually see the areas, then I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I know I know this game. I used to play this game, right? Oh, by the way, that noise is the, um, that's the waterboarding tick strike. Can't live without it, but it, like I said, you got a position on it, it's not so fun. So what you do want to know about this liquidity too, many times through these algos, pick up big orders, right? And they don't know, you know, they don't pick it up as far as has it been in there for a while or or just come in. So for instance, if I were to just drop a 300 lot in here, this market would run away from that order because these algos run it away from the big order. They want them to chase it, they fill, and then it comes back, right? So they just get a better price on their sales and then it, then it comes back, right? So many times the first time down on liquidity, gold is really trying to give me all right so everything's firing off at one time um i am filled i got stopped out on that crew chart too so anyway what i'm getting at before i go to these other markets is many times first when it gets close to it you get these algos that were running away so if you're trying to get it don't squeeze it out like i just did in crude being greedy you know if it gets down here and you start to see blue bubbles get out of some of your trade if you're using this as one of your targets is what i'm saying and you will see you'll see that shortly i might go right through it but quickly Good lesson here. This is why I just don't buy retest failure and jump in. I wait for the failure out. This is all, guys, I've watched thousands and thousands and thousands of these setups. I know the best way to trade them. Gold is extreme. We talked about this. This market's done. We talked about this yesterday. Turn this down. I'm getting 
It's getting annoying. We talked about there is nothing here. Gold is going straight into that zone, in my opinion. We talked about this last night, and that's exactly what's happening, and I'm not trading it for some reason. But, all right, let's, I'd rather look at soybeans than gold right now. Gold is just it's whipsaw city, stop runs, stop runs. Oh, and by the way, this is, I guarantee this is a mistrade. That's what I was marking up the zone, and then I got sidetracked. And just like I said, what would I have done there on that setup? Entered a, Bruce, would I have entered conservatively, waiting for a retest of the zone, or would I, would I got in aggressively, based on what you see here, what I just talked about? And you've heard it a thousand times, so you better be right with your answer. <laughs> You'd look for a, uh, uh, a retest. No. Wow. F. You get an F for the day. We are below the yellow lug. Setup was here. I would have got in this trade aggressively, and I just missed it, and I even drew the zone. So if we were above the yellow lug to go short, I need to see that, that, that. If we're below the yellow lug, I get in automatically. So I would have been in up here, and that was already a 12-cent winner, and I just missed that trade. Now I'm starting to get upset. All right. So we heard something soybeans. Maybe I can make amends in here. That's upsetting because I did go to that. Remember, I was just saying, I'm sure I missed a trade, and I didn't, and then I just did. All right, you can see buy ice, buy ice. This one's threshold. This one's threshold. I use 150 for beans. So we're just going to incorporate all this because I look, and it's one house too. This is another beauty of the SI indicator. This is the on chart. You can see the same house is getting filled for all these icebergs. Secret orders, if you guys jumped ahead but if you don't know what icebergs are then they're just hidden orders in the order book so they don't flash them so that goes to my point right here this is why they don't flash big orders because if they flash big orders the market runs away so they have to hide their orders with icebergs right that's the game and you can see here hey look at this let's see if we can watch the algos running away from this the first time down here so like literally if, if i was short here i would probably be getting if i see a big blue bubble i just would hop out I don't need to squeeze out an extra five points in NASDAQ. Like right now, I'd be like, okay, I'm out. I mean, it's not going to hit it, but I'm just saying many, many, many times, first test down here, it'll go and run away from it. So we'll see if that happens. Like, kind of like that. I'll come back to that in a second. But I'm, I'm really surprised that's going to hit that liquidity, too. That's really shocking. Not. All right. Uh, so let's see if I can actually put on a trade here. Below the yellow lug, so I would enter this dressably, right? Out of this zone, meaning ATR, first time out of here. If I want to go long, I need to see ATR retest failure. So here's your volume event. Now we wait. I can put in my, let me put in my sell order. Let's enjoy, let's enjoy the fix, the uh, manipulation here, and watch these guys get filled. Like magic, even though it's not magic. No, nope. see, so you see how that, it's just, guys, this, this is why it's these algos run the show, right? And they see, they pick this up and they run it away. Shame on whoever this is, because if this was me back in the day and I had my order resting here, I would have sold until I was maxed out to get it to fill my bid, right? So whoever this is, it's pretty weak. They didn't push that into that. They let the algos kind of screw with them here. So. It'll get filled eventually, but right now it's now those are playing games. All right, <clears throat> ATR on here is um, you can see it in the middle of my chart there. Three point one three, so three to quarter points I round up, and then I go ten percent of that. It's another two ticks, so three three seventy five, three point seven five cents out of here. I will short this. So this bottom of the zone is at O two, say O two. Um, it's ninety ninety nine. 98 quarter is where I can short this. Remember, this is aggressive. This is the one I just missed in. I just missed in um, beans. I mean, in wheat. What did I say? 90. I think I said 98 quarter. That's where I will short that. And this is exactly what I missed here, right? Wheat ATR is 3.8. So I would have been like four and a quarter points out of here. The bottom of this zone was at 30, 29.50. So four and a quarter is 25, 25. So I would have been in short right here. 
And that's what happened. And then if I would have been filled, my stop would have gone four and a quarter points on the other side of the zone. So that's a little disappointing because I drew the zone and I missed that trade. It's more than disappointing, actually, and I'm getting upset. So let's take some questions, Bruce, before I break a screen. Hey, look at the hey, look at that. Hey, look, the algo's won there. Whoever this is is a, is a wuss. I hope he's on the webinar. How do you not push that in and get filled? That's just that's so sad. There's your algos right there, guys. 85% of the market. They picked up that size and they ran it away. Any questions, Bruce? Uh, no, just some questions on ATR, but I've, I've answered them here in uh, in YouTube. Um, yeah, well, Kyle. Yeah, the, the, you might want to look more. I'll, I'll put a link in, Kyle, for stops and icebergs. Uh, you can find out from our knowledge base more about it, how it works, etc. cetera. Uh, so and, actually, this is a, now a retest. What am I doing? I should have put on the trade here. I can still put it on if this goes failure, but. No, so I, I wouldn't have put that on because we're into the blue lug, because I, I was going to say I should have shorted this setup aggressively um you're part of my room you know what should have happened here and i think it was pretty close but i would not have shorted that unless the rel relative volume was over two to one because i don't short into blue lugs because there's such important support as you just saw that just bounced off of there and you can see this relative volume was barely normal right so this this relative volume chart shows you the actual volume for the for the exact time period for the last 30 days, right? I like that type of relative volume. I don't like the thicker swim relative volume where it's showing you best based on the last 60 bars. Actually, I don't even have it on this one. Um, that's not that's that's just it's not it doesn't give you the information you need, right? Because it's always going to spike at the open, right? You see, this is like seven times. Is that wow? You say wow, that's seven times. That's a lot of volume. No, this is normal because it's basing it on the last 60 bars. The last 60 bars were overnight. So of course the opening is gonna be high volume, right? So seven times is actually normal. So I don't feel like going through all these different time periods to figure out what's normal for that time period, right? Because it's based in the last 60 bars. That's why I use the, the Sierra and there's other, there's other platforms that have the same thing. It's not difficult and you can compute it yourself, but I wanna see based on the last 30 days, you can pick whatever time period you want. Um, that gives me a better view of what's going on or a better idea of, is this a lot of volume coming through the market? All right, so this is actually the new setup, right? Here, I think this got an ATR out here, let's check. 85 down to 62, maybe not. 62.50, so it's that 23. So actually that was not, that was inside of an ATR. You know, ATR is 32. So that was not the new test trade that we're working on in my room. It was not an official uh, parameter. So anyway, I'm not going short this anyway because the blue lug's right here. Right? I want to see this, either the volume pick up or to break the blue lug. You can't see it here. I'm just doing my fake blue lug here. Uh, so I wouldn't short this anyway. Even if this did ATR retest failure, I wouldn't short it because of the blue lug. So we're just going to wait on this and see what happens. You know, if this comes down here and busts through this, it's going to, and at least fill this liquidity. Um, and then nothing kind of happens. We draw new lugs. Then it comes and retests and fails, and then I'll go short. But that's getting out of ourselves. So wait. Um. All right. And some of the best trades, if you guys watch that Pamela Ludwig webinar, it's always shared in here. If not, send me an email. I can share you access to it. Uh, one of the, Some of the best setups are signals. If it pierces the major lugs, the red or the blue, and it can't hold and it gets back above, in this case, the blue, those are great long signals. I mean, of course, you want the real-time volume, but that's just telling you something's up that it didn't draw. It didn't have the parameters to draw new lugs, and then away it goes. You'd be amazed. All right, so what's going on here as well? So this market accepted into this prior market profile composite. Let's look at what that was, how long ago that was. It wasn't too long ago. This was from uh, July 20th. I think this is like a two-day. 
So the tendency, so when Mark, we'll just see what this is, and I'll show you guys how to do this real quick, because I said I would before. So when multiple days, at least two days, overlap the value area, and all the value area is 70% of where the trade occurred that day, and the point of control is where the price where the most trade occurred that day. When 70% of this value area overlaps this by at least 50%, which this is pretty close, then I merge the two days, and then I come up with a composite profile. Right? They're very, very, very powerful. You saw the one that I didn't get out of my crude trade, and it just cost me 100 plus X. So then you do that, you draw it. So the other thing you need to know is when markets accept into market profile composites, they have a very, very high tendency to get to the other side. Doesn't mean that it's going to be a straight line, but throughout the day, it'll probably, you could do this, 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 but by the end of the day, there's a very high probability this will get down to the bottom of this, which is just under 12,000. Right? So could happen right now, could be later on. You don't know that. Nobody knows that, but you you have a, you come up with a story, right? That's the whole idea of the idea of trading. You come up with if-then scenarios, and then you wait for your real-time volume to trade them. Look at the, look at the algos running away again. <laughs> it's so funny to watch. Um, but this is why you got to be careful saying, I'm going to I'm gonna put my order right below that. I'm going to let that get filled. I mean, this will get filled eventually, don't get me wrong. But if you like getting tortured for an hour, then hold on to it. Otherwise, I, I would not mess around. It gets close, just get out of some of your, you know, if you're using this as one of your targets like we talked about. So let's see if they finally push it in and look at it here. So there's another band down here. I mean, it's been in here for a while. Not crazy. You can see there was something here before, too. So this is probably going to get filled as well. All right. Let's see what's going on here. I need to get off this wheat trade before I throw up for the trade I missed. Here. I guess we'll take a look at gold. I'm trying to avoid this market. It's just... Plus, it's the worst traders on the planet in this market. It's nothing but stop runs. But we had a lot of activity down here, you can see. Let me clear out these prior zones. Right, so you can see here you had big stop run three times normal. I mean three times threshold. You had another 198 and then another 266. And then you had and that was only 93 by ice that didn't qualify, but this did. This was 265. So this is a one big double whammy. Double whammy is the dumb money puke into the big money buying. Right. So let's draw this as one big zone. So you take your little cursor and you go where it started on the spike. It's right there and you can see this awesome sweeps indicator helps you draw your zone too because you can see where they started to sweep the, the stops, sweep the market with the stops I should say. And then, it's down here. That's your zone. Let's just see if that liquidity got filled. Hey, look at that. You believe that they were patient but it ran away from that a couple times and then it finally filled it now it'll probably fill this and then we'll probably go straight up as they get their fills and again you don't know what they're doing right and it's please i'm begging you guys to stop trying to understand everything that's going on like what are they doing are they are they getting out of shorts are they initiating longs are they covering are they hedging options positions it does not matter what they're doing especially the si indicator setups you're never going to know what's going on or why unless you're god almighty you're not going to know and nor do you need to you just need to know the volume event where it's at and or liquidity that and how the market reacts to it that's what you need to know shockingly that liquidity just got filled too so surprised this is really important though. We've just now gotten through this important zone, support zone. So this is obviously looking bearish. This is probably heading down on the high volume note of this. Doesn't mean it's going straight. Right, that's weed. No, try not to miss that trade. So yes, this is bearish. Doesn't mean it can't pop up. No, but I, I'll tell you right now, the best trades are going to be a return to the zone to short and then watching that. Doesn't mean it can't go straight here. I'll still take shorts. But what was support is now resistance, right? This was a really, really, really important support zone, the top of this balance, and we just broke it. So one or two things can happen. This can just rip straight down to this next zone, or we can come back, retest it, then fail. It could still, it could do that too, but the odds are it'll come back, 
because equities do the screw you move all the time. Come back here, we get a sub, and then I'll short it. But there just has not been anything. Actually, let's take a look. We may have new lugs, and I could possibly short that prior setup we just talked about. So let's take a peek here. Still no new lugs. There you go. So now, now I can short this because I don't short it in the blue lug. We have new lugs, so this is the next stop, in my opinion, if this can hold. So now what will I do? Well, now we have new lugs. Now I can trade this setup. Now if we test it, retest fail, I'm going short. That's barring anything new, right? There was a little bias up here too. It wasn't quite threshold. You don't you want to be very careful piecing together spikes just to get to threshold, which is 150. I just know it's in the same area anyway, so I'm really hoping we get a retest of this zone failure, and I will go short. Look what's coming in down there. This is pretty short term, but you see, you see there's still some, some stuff here. It wasn't as heavy. It's really heavy now, but it was kind of like this one, right? So these could be good targets. Here's a spot gamma level. So if this goes here, 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 and I get filled, I will definitely look into some of these areas to get out of at least one. All right, so just waiting for a retest of that zone. All right, was something happening in wheat? Never, still no fill in uh, soybeans. We had 130, 160, it's so almost 300 by ice. This was another 84. Again, one house you can see with the white line. Doesn't really matter, but it's good to know. Hey, is this one player? Is it multiple players? You can come up with strategies on that too. I'm sure we're going to incorporate that. So this is this is a good example. You got to be careful of. So you see, this is one house, right? Here's the white line. It started here. This is part of their order. It was like 80, right? And then they came in more and more. Be careful. So say that was say this 80 lot or this 80 bias was like down here, right? And then you got your your concentrated volume up here. I don't draw my, even though I know it's one house, I don't start my zone where the 80 started if it's really far away. I, I want the concentrated area because the concentrated area is loaded up traders. So yeah, there's buy ice here. Somebody tried to sell sell that heavy and, and they're now wrong, right? So I want to know where the concentrated volume is. It's good to know this is where it started, but it, you know if it's far away, say it was down here, I don't draw the zone and make a huge zone based on just that 80, 80 buy ice. See what I'm saying? I look for the concentrated area. So that's what I'm, this just happened to be right on top of these two, so I'll, I'll draw it in there. But if it was far away, I wouldn't include it unless it was threshold, which is 150. All right, so there's your zone. Let's check our lugs. Make sure I do not miss the retest of that zone. Um, hey, oh, look at that. Like, can you guys see that? Maybe yeah, bounce right off the blue lug, who knew? So if I was short, I would have been out right there at the blue lug. So that is, you know, I'm telling you, these things are the second strongest thing that I've seen besides book map. That's why we use them. So anyway, blue lug, I take setups aggressively off the blue lug so I can go long this aggressively. Meaning one ATR out of here. I don't have to wait for retest failure. 3.91 is your ATR, so that's four cents. I add. 10% of that, 0.4, so we round up, 0.5, so four and a half cents. Out of here, I will go long. So this was at 14.75, 18.75, 19 quarter. That's my entry. If I get filled, I'm going to go four and a half cents below the zone because I forced the market, the algos, who are the market, to get it outside of an ATR for me to be wrong. And then I don't get whipsawed out of my trade because it's very, very likely to do that. Even though this is what I was explaining to you guys, I miss trades. So if I'm in this short, this is my usual complaining, right? If I'm in this short, it does this for three hours and then it finally goes. If I miss it, it's just a straight profit. You make it in two, two seconds. I would have made it in two seconds, right? These are when I miss and I'm long, it does that. It's just me complaining. Again, guys, I've always talked to myself when I trade. So now I just, I'm on a webinar, so it's, I'm not as crazy because I, but there is a funny story back in the day when I first started making money, big money for my firm. 
They gave me my own office. Like everyone else had to team up and I had my own office office because I was like the top trader in the firm. So that was like one of the perks. So people would walk by my office and they'd hear me talking and they'd be like, who's in the room with Pulsini? Like, who's he, who's he screaming at? And he's like, oh, he's talking to himself, this imaginary friend. So I've talked to myself forever and I have to because if not, if you try to keep your emotions in, for me, my head will pop off. So that's why I talk to myself. So when you hear me complaining and stuff, I do the exact same thing when I'm, t- when I'm sitting here by myself. So back to the crazy thing that Bruce was saying, that's 100% true about me. Any questions, Bruce, on what I'm doing here, even though I haven't put on a trade besides the crude trade? Uh, no, the, 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 um, the, um, uh, no, no worries, Scott. I mean, I just, I'm just kidding. Of course. Like, uh, uh, I just need to get that across. Um, the, um, uh, no, no, I mean, look, I mean, I, <laughs> my God, uh, you're, you know, your, your, your trading, uh, uh, experience and, and knowledge is, uh, is amazing. That's why we're really lucky to have you here. Um, and that's what's uh, not normal. Uh, then that's what's special. So, um, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, no, no doubt. And uh, it, yeah, what? Hey, I love it. I mean, whatever it takes. You know, if you try, if you talk to yourself, if you, I mean, just just that one quote alone. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. You know, like <laughs> control your risk. You know, call your broker, do whatever it is uh, to to set yourself up for that. Um, but um, wow, look at that move. Um, no, no, no plan. I mean, no uh, questions here, um, Scott. So um, uh, yeah, continue on. Okay. Um, so you see here, we, we did pop into the zone. I was going to play retest failure of that stop zone, but now we have a new event. So now, and I'm just going to delete this zone because it's pretty much right in the same area. And I don't want to confuse myself if I forget what's going on in here and I come back and I'm like, wait, what's that other zone? So let's make sure we get all the prices that occurred in this cell ice, which was pretty heavy. See, here's your spike. Here's your little cursor. Spike it all, go all the way across and incorporate every bubble that happened in the spike. That's how you draw your... Make it black for cell ice. So I know the type of setup it is. All right. So now we have to make I have to make a decision here. <clears throat> Dancing around the yellow lug, I believe. Yes. All right. So when we are just dancing around the yellow lug, I wait for any setup, I wait for retest failure. I mean, granted, yes, technically we are above the yellow lug. But I know this thing is pretty bearish. Overall, it doesn't mean that we can't pop back into the zone, right? It doesn't mean anything. I could do that. But I'm just saying, you know, I, I would rather see the setup in this zone, but I'll take the short right here. But I'm not going to take a long aggressively. It was what I was getting at because we're still below that zone. I think that zone is going to fail when we get back up in there. So I'm going to take... I'll take the trade long here, but I, it's my conservative entry. So I need to see the ATR, the retest, the failure. Downside, same thing, because we are technically above the yellow log. I need to see ATR, retest, failure. You could say, you know, this is where you got to use some subjectiveness in your trading and, and, you know, you have some of your own ideas where you say, you know what, I know it's a little bit of, if you're using logs, I know it's a little bit above the yellow log, but this is below the zone. This is pretty close to a retest of the zone. Here's my volume setup. I'm going to get in aggressively so I don't miss a trade. Because guys, if you re, if you guys and girls, if you wait for retest, it doesn't always retest. You know, in my studies from watching these, and you know, this is not official, but it retests the zones about 80% of the time. That's just my opinion from watching all of these, right? So yeah, I could wait for retest failure, retest failure. But sometimes it just goes, goes, goes. And if you had your idea and then you just watch the thing run away, you're like, oh man, why didn't I take that? So you have to decide whether you want to get aggressively or wait for the retest. Wait for the retest, it doesn't always retest. That's what I'm getting at. All right, so let's see what happens in that zone. I'm really surprised there hasn't been much in, uh, yes, there was a big swipe there, big sweep. 1700 sweeps and you could draw zones off of these we haven't officially started that yet i need to do more research on them as far as trading not just off the sweeps because you can see this well i mean the, you can see this was uh there was bias this was not threshold but then you also had sweeps behind it so you know i would not give you a verbal lashing 
if you drew a zone and traded off this. I'm not going to, I don't want to confuse people what I'm doing here because I don't trade off sweeps right now. But, you know, if you're experienced with these and the SI and you know how to trade the zones and you could make that a zone and trade off of it. So I'm getting at this is another incredible feature of book map with the sweeps, right? The sweeps, the SI indicator, the liquidity, everything. It's yeah, yeah you know, I mean, the, the, I say it all the time. The, the beauty of, of, of that sweep indicator is look at that 847, right? And then how many are stops there? Well, you know, 218. Uh, I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. So, you know, you can really dig into the details here and see like, okay, well, how many are stops compared to, to uh, um, uh, you know, uh, market buys or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, I mean, they might be people exiting with a market buy. Um, but uh, doesn't doesn't matter. I mean, at least you have the context there. It's right in front of you. Hey, you guys are seeing stuff that 98% of traders don't see. I don't care how good of a market technician you are. I say this every webinar too. You don't have all the information. And if you had all the information, it'd be even better. But this is interesting too because, yeah, 300 of, the, of this of these sweeps were stop or a stop runs. But that means 1,400 of them was someone just sweeping the order book. So you had aggressive buying. Then you had hidden buying. 500 hidden buys right so that's extra information like this area could you could draw this zone again i'm not going to do it for this webinar because i, I want it to stay pretty standard of what i'm doing because there's a lot of new traders that get on here i don't want to confuse it but if you are advanced and you know what you're looking at this is a very good area you could draw your zone on one that where that occurred because you had a sweep you had buy stops someone swept 1400 and you have buy ice on top of which are hidden orders would that only trigger when someone's selling it so the buy, the buy, the sweeps didn't trigger that buy ice. The selling did, and then you had, and they got a mouthful of ice as well. So that's that's an interesting area that I, you know, personally would probably trade. But I just, I'm not gonna, I don't want to confuse people here. This, I want this to be more of a basic. Even though, guys, I know if you're watching this for the first time, and I got guys in my room that watch me every day. This is what I do in my room every twice a day, every day. That still aren't following, or they're, you know, like it's too fast, blah blah blah. I understand i'm trading live right i don't have time most trade trade guys that claim to make money that you know everything is in hindsight they show you oh yeah this was the area you wanted to buy this is, i'm doing it real time right so of course it's going to be fast point is all the book every book map webinar i've ever done all you got to do is google book map youtube and you can find every webinar ever go back watch the replays in my room i record every webinar i do there's f almost 500 webinar replays in the almost two years i've had my trade room year and a half Right? And you can go back, you can replay the day. You, and another great feature with, with Bookmap, you can go back and replay the day here as well. So you can bring in the data, play it, and stop it. And stop it with the webinar and say, okay, this is what he was doing. Draw your zones and you can slow it down, right? If you're, My point is if you're not following along, it's too fast because I'm trading live. You have ways to go back and practice and, and slow it down to, to learn what you're doing, right? So... Like, you know, like the guy said that was couldn't follow along. He's like, I understand you're trading live, like, but it's just really fast for me right now. So if it's too fast for you, don't think that you're an idiot. You just can't. You know, it's just once you learn the stuff, it slows down, and it is, and you'll learn this is not complicated stuff that I'm doing. It's very simple, and it's by design, right? Every week I tell the story. The millions of dollars that I made scalping was just staring at the order book. It doesn't get much simpler than that. I didn't even have a chart up. I was just looking at the way the orders came in the order book, playing a video game, right? So it doesn't get much simpler than that. And I was able to make millions doing that. So it would probably behoove you to make your trading as simple as possible. And you'll do much better than having 45 indicators on in your chart and confusing yourself with all these different setups, so on and so forth. So that's my rant for today for that. All right, so we're just waiting for this to, either way, I want to see ATR retest failure out of this new sell ice zone for my trade. So nothing, nothing's doing there. This is, yes, this was that prior ice zone. I didn't trade this zone, remember, because of the, we went an ATR above and below it. So no trade here. Like I said, you could draw a zone based on these sweeps if you want. I'm not going to do that. Let's look at what happened in the greens. Still not filled on this wheat trade. You can see this buy ice. Is still coming in, right? So you could, if you want, this is what I'm talking about. This is one house. I need to incorporate this, this as well. I don't, I don't really need to make this zone another three cents bigger for this ice. This is the concentrated ice area. That's what I'm focusing on, even though it is the same person or house or whatever, right? But you could. That's not crazy, right? And this zone isn't crazy. It's a five cents zone. But what I'm saying, say this one like up here, 
and then you see like a another 50 another 30 whatever and it's the same house do i do i need to draw my zone that wide no because this is not important market moving claim. this is right that's, that's what i was getting at with you know, keeping your zones contained to the highest volume areas all right so nothing there what were we doing here i was going to short this it's still sitting in the zone so i was going to short this aggressively because we're below the yellow lug but if this goes atr retest fail i'll go long this as well so kind of rare we have no trades anywhere and the only trade i put on and you guys weren't even on you just saw after i put it on even though it did come back to that exact area when we were on the webinar you didn't even see me put this trade on this is when we got on the webinar if you remember or right about there so but it barely made anything and i because i cost myself by being greedy i should have got out of one it cost myself a thousand bucks but that's what you get for being greedy uh, you still have an open order there on the mat scott oh yeah thank you you wonder why i'm having all my errors this month like i do Jeez, this stuff all, you gotta remember i'm trading multiple accounts too so it's like even the test trade account we're doing with the the new strategies that i'm doing in my trade room I'll forget, I've blown out, so we, we do on Apex, right? So the Apex, I highly recommend you guys look into that if you are just learning or you're, you know, you don't have a ton of money to be trading where you can't be risking, you know, a lot of money on your trading account. The Apex, again, it's on my website. I, I always go over this because for some reason I always get emails on this stuff. Just go to my website and you can see all these banners right here are all discounts, book map. There's Apex, Trader Sync, that's the journaling, right? That's the stuff here. Actually, I imported the last two days. Let's see where I'm at here. Um, you can go in here. I haven't done it for a while because I've been a bad boy and bad trader, but you can go in here and you can click in here and you can put in all your, you know, what you're seeing. And I got my charts and explanations and everything I look at, right? You should be doing this for every trade. I just have been, I'm just so busy with everything else. It's just so hard to do, but it's no excuse. But I would be literally sitting in front of my computer screen 11 hours a day with my stuff. So you could see what a bad August I had. As you're going to have drawdowns, right? Yeah, I've had them before. Not this long. This is like a full month. August is like the worst trading month. So if I didn't have my trade room, I probably wouldn't even have traded in August. I probably would have just taken a vacation somewhere, right? And that's what most big traders do is they take off because they know it's such a bad month. And you can see this started right at the end of July. A little drawdown now. I'll bet you it does that. Right, because once the market starts trading normal and it's not just algo ridden, you know, but you're gonna have drawdowns. That's what trading is. If you have an edge, it'll look like that. So anyway, I got on a tangent here. You can get this kind of you should be using something like this. This is the best one I've seen. But all this stuff, tick strike, it's all there's all discounts. Not spot gamma or rhythmic, but the other ones are. Um, but anyway, the apex is I highly recommend this if you guys are trying out things like for instance we're trying strategies on the apex account the reason i got off tangent there is because i've made a couple errors in there where i forgot to delete my orders at the end of the day and if you have if you have our position if you have a position on and you, know, you get to the end of the regular trading hours you you violated violated their rules you get knocked out of the account you got to re-up re-up the 80 bucks to reset the i'm doing another fifty thousand dollar account for the room you got to re-up to do that, right? So it's like it adds up when you do it three or four times. And I've done that multiple times this month, too. So I'm just a comedy of errors this month, which is inexcusable for how long I've been trading. But my point is I just have so much I'm doing. I'm trading so many different accounts, doing the Apex, doing the test, doing the live trading. It's just I'm making excuses, but I'm making excuses. All right, any other questions, Bruce? I haven't really done much, so I don't know what they'd be asking, but... No, just this a, is a training, of, guys. Some days it's. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, a lot, a lot of questions on uh, uh, ATR, but um, look, it's it's really it's not complex stuff here, um, and uh, uh, just you know, it's, it's a sliding um, uh, indicator or you know uh, uh, number because uh, that's precisely what ATR is, and that's precisely why um, Scott's using it. Um, so uh, d just. Um, uh, keep keep that in mind and don't get hung, hung up too much on the details, I think, on that. Um, Let's Google it. Google what ATR is, and it's just giving you, a, it's reflecting the current volatility in the market is all it's doing, right? And the way I trade my zones, because I used to just have standard amounts of points where I would trade these zones, right? So I would say, okay, hey, if ES gets three points outside of the zone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to short it aggressively, so on and so forth. And that's not the right way to trade these because one day, three points is a lot for ES. Another day, the ATR is like 20 and three points is just a blip on the screen. 
right? So I, I'm, I'm adapting to dynamically adapting to the volatility of the way I trade the zones. That's all I'm doing, right? And that was all through trial and error, right? I, I learned the best way to, again, I've watched thousands and thousands and thousands of these over the last few years. I've determined the best way to trade them is to know the current volatility and trade them that way. And that's all it is. Google ATR, you'll learn what it is. Come to my trade room, watch me trade every day, and learn how to do it. If not, get on the bookmap webinars. I do the same thing in the bookmap webinars every Thursday. <clears throat> all right, so we're just waiting to see what happens out of this um, out of this zone. Remember, I am we're dancing around the yellow lug here. That's why I'm not taking this trade aggressively short. You see, see what I mean about dancing around the yellow lug? Like it was below, then it was above, now it's below. So that's why this current setup, this sell ice that I just have, that, that black zone I drew, I'm waiting for ATR retest failure, ATR retest failure, to determine which way I'm going to go. The meaning I'm not going to just jump in a short here. So, But we will check ATR because it's getting close. 31.16, so round up 31 and a quarter points. This was basically at 70. So I need to see 39, three quarters, which it's almost at right now. That would be an official full ATR away from this zone. If you guys in my trade room are listening, you should be watching this closely. So if we do this, 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 then I will short it. Does it mean it's going to do that? No, this is what I'm talking about. If you love this area and you're extremely bearish and you're like, no, we're through that important zone. That zone didn't hold. I don't. I don't care what we're doing around the log. I want to go long. I want to go short. This looks horrible. Then take this aggressively because it may not retest. That's the risk you take, right? That's the risk I'm taking that we're going to get. And I'm fine with it because that's my rules. Those are my trading rules that I that I follow. I don't switch them up every day. That's how, if you want to beat the algos, which are, again, 85% of the market, if you want to beat the algos, you have to trade like an algo, meaning you don't just flip-flop your rules every day or start to add something new. Oh, I like that indicator. I'm going to use that today. Oh, I like this. No, I have my rules. I wait, for, in this sense, in this instance, because we're dancing around the yellow log, I wait for ATR retest failure. Then I'll go short. If I miss it, I miss it. There's always another setup right around the corner. So at the end of the day, the way you judge yourself is not on your P&L. You can be down on the day. There's your ATR, by the way. Um, you can be down on the day. You can lose money on a, any given day and you did everything right. That's the key. At the end of the day, you judge yourself. Did I follow my rules? Did I break my rule? If you followed your rules and you lost money, fine. You should be happy with yourself because you did what, everything you can do. Only thing you can control is yourself. If at the end of the day, you lost money, and you broke your rules, even if you made money and you broke your rules, you should not be happy. That was just, you just got lucky, right? If you break your rules, that's how you determine if you had a good day or not, right? Not, not by p &L. So here we go, there's your ATR. So now I'm hoping we get a retest failure and I'll short this. So this is another example of, you do not pay attention to that because it's just a game. It's just algo screwing with you guys. You see this, this heavy liquidity, like, I don't think we're going to make it. Let's move it up a tad. It's so funny to watch, really. Is. Sometimes you'll see it like here, and then it'll be here. Then it'll be here. It's pretty funny to watch. Okay, this is this is the key. Like, you get to see what's actually happening in the market. Right? That's There's no, nothing more important than what you're watching here. It's real-time volume. I don't care what line you have on the chart. I don't care what zone you have on the chart. If If you're not getting a volume event in that area, it doesn't mean anything. Right? It's like... But it, that can also be a signal too. Don't get me wrong. If you come to an important area and there's nothing there, well, that could be a that could be a, a signal that you, know, you can fade that area, right? Because there's nothing really happening. That's a whole different you know strategy. My point is, you want you know, yeah, you want to know where your important areas are. But you, for me, I need to see an volume event to confirm what I what I think is going to happen. <clears throat> Happen here. I know you got your other guys starting here shortly, so let's hopefully we can get a retest failure and actually put on a trade on this webinar. That'd be cool. Missed the fill there. So this is still alive for the short, but remember, I'm not this is wheat. I'm not shorting into the blue lug, so I'm not shorting until we make new lugs. And here we are again, right? We did get a basically a seven cent move off of there. Oh, and by the way. 
Here's a good example, right? You see these days right here? I just haven't merged them, or I might have separated them. Here's day one. This was... Put this off here for a second. This was August 29th, day two. Here's day one's value area. Here's day two. Is 50% of this day... I mean, is this day within 50% of this day? Absolutely. So we merge those two. This is my favorite part of, of doing this because I feel like I'm playing Pac-Man. If you're old enough, you know what I'm talking about. So that ate, that that area ate the other one. Now, is this volume area inside that one? Absolutely is. You merge that one. Is this one in inside this three? Absolutely. So now you have a four-day market profile composite. Very, very powerful. The best trades. And you can see what's happening here, too. This is right here, right now. So this is a great trading area. And we have a volume setup. Great trading area, no matter what happens here, it's a great area. And then if this if this fails out of here, this gets inside this one, the tendency is to what? Get to the other side. So if this fails, we get some new lugs, I will short this and I'm looking down in here for my targets. Right? And you can see point of control for this one was important. For this composite, look at that. Oh, look at that matched exactly up to this market profile composite low. You're going to see how, and I, I use market profile. I do not use volume profile because I look at enough volume stuff. I need a different view on things. So that's why I use the TPOs. It's just the time price opportunities. It just draws a new, you know, a new um, bar every time period. You would be amazed at the strength. You know, these are very important areas like lugs, so on and so forth. Then many times you'll get the lugs like you do right here. And I'm sure they're related somehow. I don't know her magic formula. But like I've said before, I think the trading guys have spoken to her with whatever she's using because they're so incredible. But I'm sure this isn't a coincidence. This blue lug is right at the bottom of the Spark Profile Composite. doesn't mean that's all that is. I know that's not all it is, but it's, it's part of it, I would think. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Here's my analogy, guys, every week. I get that we get this in the room too. Like I say, no, I don't know the I don't know the inputs of, of this. I, I don't want to trade it. I am very selective of what I use in my trading and I rarely add anything. But when I see something work for nine months, you know, the guy that told me about this made like millions of dollars with them, and I wouldn't let I finally started watching them. I don't need to know the components. I need to know they work. Just like when this is my analogy I use when you walk in a room and you need light, do you flip the light switch or do you do you take the light bulb out? light bulb out and start looking at the filament and try to understand how it works. I don't need to know how light works to use it. I don't need to know how these work to know they're incredible, right? So that's the moral of that story. Watch this closely today. If this, I want new lugs, but if this can break down, this is, and you could say, hey, look what's down here, guys. I wonder where we're going today, right? This is just more when you do your scale of being long or short, you add in all your things. So you're like right now, long wise, we are at the very bottom of that. We're at a blue lug. If we break, broke the blue lug, liquidity below, inside the prior market profile composite, do you see this? And then you use your scale to determine you know, your story and which way you want to trade. And then you use the real-time volume to trade it. Simple. Not easy. Simple. Trading is simple if you can use this stuff the right way. It does, it's still not easy, right? But, all right, we never got a retest of that zone, which sucks. But you can see they're hammering these stocks too. And these are the highest weighted stocks that comprise the indices that the futures are derived from. So it would behoove you to keep an eye on these. You can come up with strategies just with this stuff if you come to an important area and you don't hear these things firing off, you can fade it, things like that. Right, I don't trade like that, but I, I, you know, I keep an eye on it. Especially if, we, if like we come down to an important area, these they are, they aren't selling the stocks, and I get like I hear buy ice come in or something. That's a great trade. You can come up with that kind of strategy. So that whole idea is to come up with you know three to five really strong playbooks that you just wait, sit back and wait for, and then you take those trades. You build them up gradually, one after another, over a six months to a year. You should have three to five, and then you just wait like a sniper. You wait for those setups, and that's when you trade. You don't trade every move of the market because you will get killed and you will blow out your account. You're wasting your time if that's how you're trading, and you're wasting your money. You may get lucky for a while. Nice little 800 swipe right there. <clears throat> So if you're staring at a bar chart, do you, do you know that just happened? Do you have any idea that just happened? You're looking at this, you're like, oh, there's an up bar. Okay, yeah, deal. You see this, you're like, wait, someone just swiped 800. That's important information, guys. I don't know how else I can say it. 
All right, so nothing's real. It looks like we're getting a retest here. I'll stand for a couple more minutes and then I'll hop off because I know you got your other guy going. But I'm, what I'm waiting for here is the retest of this zone and then a failure so I can go short. So this has officially gotten an ATR out of here, right? So that is my signal that I can take this trade. So if this, now I'm going to have to delete this. Remember, I was going to go, uh, actually, I don't even remember what that was from. It was like two years ago. But I almost made an error there, leaving an order in an order book. So what I'm trying to get at, so say this market comes like this and rips right through here and gets an ATR above, will I go long? No, because the long is now invalidated because we got the full ATR below there. Right? So I'm either going short or no, no setup until I get another setup. And trust me, there's one right around the corner. About it. Let's see if we can get a retest here in the next minute or two. If not, no other questions. I'll just very boring trading webinar today with no trading. But guys, this is what trading is. This is what I was getting at before. Some days it's just not there. Does it mean I just throw on a trade because I need action? There are a couple guys in my trade room that right now have an action problem, right? I did a one-on-one -on -one with one the other day, and he's trying to incorporate all these different things. He's just learning the stuff and he's trying to incorporate all these different scenarios and he's like well i've seen it work i've seen it work well that's great first of all you need to see it work like hundreds of times before you risk your money on it right two you you don't want 45 things going on at one time right you want to build one thing at one playbook after another if you're trying to if you want action what i tell everyone is pull up a horse race pull up some horse racing while you're trading there's your action wait for your setups your scenarios in trading because if you're trying to trade every move for action, you are not going to make it. Trust me, it's not going to happen. I've seen that guy hundreds of times in my career that need action. I, I use the story of the one guy in my trading when I was at my firm, when I was right when I started. Remember I told you you had to share office space at the time. This was before I was making money. I literally, I'm not exaggerating. He would get up, he'd leave, go play some video games in the game room. He'd come back, he'd sit down at his chair Within one second, he just threw on an order. No reason why. I mean, he wasn't even at, the, at his screen and know what was going on. That's what I'm talking about. That is an action trader. If you are that person, you need to stop because you're not going to make it. Here's your retest of the zone. So now, I may not get filled on this, but you guys are going to know what I'm doing here. So let's check it again. ATR is 32.2. I really hope my room caught the, the test trade that we're working on there because there it is again, over and over and over. So we did get within 10% uh, of an ATR here, right? This was at 70 and a half, we got up to 68. So the bottom of the zone is again, 70 and a half, is that right? Yeah, 70 and a half. I'm gonna go ATR plus 10%, which is 3.2 points. So that puts me at 35 and a quarter points below the zone, puts me at 35 half, 35 quarter is where I will enter this trade short if it comes back okay 35 quarter so you can see why i wait in certain instances where i just don't jump in if i don't feel comfortable being aggressive i wait for that doesn't mean it always does it but it does it way more often than it doesn't so now i will short CLI CL, I'll draw this really quick and then i'm gonna hop off I'm gonna clear out these zones because there's about 400 of them on here and so let's just clear out these i'm gonna leave that first one there or that one that stopped me out. But you see guys, what, we didn't even cover this. Like I saved myself. Did I let this come all the way back and, and take a loss? This is where my stop was originally. It wouldn't, hasn't gotten there yet, but I got a new setup. So I was able to trail my stop based on the new Yeah, I got stopped out. I made a little bit, but it could have easily just held and kept going. You don't know what's gonna happen. That's why you follow your rules. So quickly, let's just draw this. We'll take a quick look at the lugs and I'm gonna hop off here. And this is pretty good ice. 189, 150 is a threshold in here. That's correct. I'm not going to color it right now. I don't have time, but so that's that. We already know this is an important zone here. It's just a retest of it again. Right. I can tell you this. Ice iceberg, sell ES, to of course, every time, every time I go to get off the webinars and something comes so in. And that was ES. But quickly, this is not bullish. That's a tail, one of the four important areas of charting we talked about earlier. That is instant rejection. 
that is not good. We get through the zone, we're doing that. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, the zone's still a support zone. This is where this directional conviction started from, but keep that in mind. Quickly, uh, crude is below the yellow lug, so I can enter aggressively short. Go long, I need to see ATR retest. So just keep that in mind for this zone. Bruce, you want me to draw this zone in the S, or do I need to hop off here? Uh, Scott, it's your webinar. I mean, uh, whatever you like to do. Um, I don't like I mean, overlapping your other guy, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you, you know, an hour and a half is is a lot a lot of talking, um, and uh, you, you've gone through a lot of. Different I'm talking things. without trading. <laughs> well, right. you know, the market gives what it gives, um, but uh, what, exactly. whatever you, you're coming. Let me draw. With. Let me just draw this. No, you know, I'm going to say how I'm going to trade. You can see you had 700, almost 800 sell ice here. Another wave of 500. This is one house. You can tell by the icebergs on chart with the black line there. Here's your zone. We'll color it. I, whoops. So I use black for cell ice. And I will show you how I'll trade this, and then you guys are on your own. But that's step one. What's step two? ATR. ATR is 8.04, which is pretty amazing. It feels like it's been dead, and the ATR has actually increased. Remember, that's the dynamic view of the volatility right dynamic gauge of the volatility we are above the yellow lug so what does that mean what does that mean bruce how can how, how, how can i trade this setup aggressively aggressively to the long side correct i think i drew this too big actually yeah make sure you, you zone in on your charts so you make your zones because it could cost you literally to the tick and that's how exact these areas are many times all right so Aggressively, ATR is 8. Oops, that's hourly ATR. ATR is 8.04, so we'll say 8 and a quarter. And I'm going to go 10% of that, which is like a full point. If I round up, that would be 0.8, so one full point. So 9 and a quarter points. I can go long here. Outside of this zone. This is how I trade them, and these are my rules. I know many people are like, why would you, you're going to risk, wait for it to go nine points? What? Please just understand, I've watched thousands of these setups, and this is the best way I've determined to trade them. I say at every webinar, this is the science. There's no disputing this is the cell ice, and this is an important area. You can trade them however you want. You can come up with a brand new method, you know, different from what I do. It. The way I do it is because I've watched so many of these, that's the best way I've determined you trade them how you want, this is this is the volume of it. That's what's important. So to go short, I need to see eight and a quarter points, retest failure, and I will go short. And you can see what's down here, confluent with some spot gamma levels. We haven't even talked about that today. I don't have time, but uh, you can see the difference here. Where, where, where is this where is this market lit up? Is it lit up up here or is it black hole? Look at the difference. Doesn't mean we can't go up, but there's a very, 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 very high percentage, again, that we tag all of this today and it could be right now again do you think this is kind of informa good information do you do you see that information on this a great market technician do you see that do you have any idea what's going on here no as far as real-time volume so hopefully i'm getting it through getting through to you guys and how important it is to know what's really happening in the real-time volume because this is what drives markets bars on a chart do not drive markets all right that's it i'm out that's what i will do with the yes aggressive long retest failure short I will short this as well. We already got the retest of this. I'll short NASDAQ here. Um, you guys saw my grains. These are all resting as well. So I could have a lot of trades on here shortly. Uh, this one is pending. If we get an ATR below here, then I'm canceling this long idea. Then I'll be looking for retest failure to go short if we get new loves. This one, I'm waiting for it to break out of the zone. This was That was wheat. This is beans. Uh, and then also crude. So there's a lot There's a lot of stuff pending here right now. Now, of course, it's all picking up now, but keep an eye on this zone as well. All right, that's it. Not any trading, but hopefully you guys learned some lessons. That's what my goal is on these webinars to teach you. I do this twice a day every day in my trading room and over, and you can learn the proprietary stuff we're working on too. It's a very, very, very promising. So that's all I got to tell you. I've been using very a lot today too. All right, Bruce, unless there's any other questions, I'm out. No, sir. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, uh, excellent webinar. And uh, 
uh, e even though there's nothing, you know, not too much uh, happening, and it's, it's whippy and stuff like, uh, uh, it, it's just so important to understand what's going on in here. Right, and this is the key to understanding what's going on. I can't, I can't stress it enough. Yeah. Uh, right. oh, great. Well, uh, enjoy your uh, uh, Labor Day weekend, uh, guys. We're, we will not have uh, any uh, webinar uh, on Monday, uh, just so you know. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll catch up with you next Thursday, Scott. Awesome, Bruce. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. See ya. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.